What up everyone, it's Skirt and Sing and I'm back with a brand new video. So my film Crammed has been released and I decided why not do one of the things where Variety, I think it is, they do it, where they do notes on the scene and I break down one of the scenes in this film itself because there's one thing I always want to like to go in depth in and that scene is the mine scene. If you haven't seen the film yet, I'm not going to quickly spoil it. So quickly go check out the film. It should be on my channel by the time this video goes up. But make sure you watch that first so you know what I'm talking about and you don't get spoilers for my film crammed. But right now I have my whiteboard here and I'm going to do a little drawing and illustration breaking down how I filmed the scene in Jasmine's mind. Alright, so I've set up the whiteboard and I've added a key here with the names of the characters that are in the mind scene itself. So I have a J for Jasmine, E for English, T for Time, F for Failing, M for Math, E, G for Endgame, and B for Brother. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to essentially draw out the scene and explain the composition of the shots and how I managed to plan out having several different characters all interact with just the one person in a way which makes sense and ensuring that the audiences wouldn't get um, ensuring that audiences wouldn't get confused by what was going on in the scene itself so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to set up a table um, and we have it go across here sorry about that let me just turn off my phone volume so I'm going to set off the uh, set up the table and I'm going to use yellow text. So we have the one table in the middle where Jasmine is. Then you have the one behind her. Where we have some thoughts and the one in front where we have more thoughts. Okay. So with the tables, setting up the tables, I tried to have Jasmine in the middle as much as possible. So with the classroom, I think there were rows of four or five. So I put her towards the middle. So for the sake of this visual... I'm just using um, three tables. I'm just going to push this up a little. Okay, perfect. So you have Jasmine here, sitting behind the second table over there. And the first thought I introduce, well, when I bring her into the world, I have the camera facing towards Jasmine um, front on. Um, and I use that as a way to establish her coming into a new world, essentially her mind. And then having the wide shot to establish that everyone in the classroom is gone. I also have the color of the scene change into a more greenish tone. Um, further than the blue that we have in the normal classroom. It still maintains that whole dark um, and colorless kind of feeling. Which I tried to give throughout the rest of the film. But this time there's just that green overlay on top of it. So introducing Jasmine... Um, we have the book of knowledge in front of her, a long-term memory, uh, which if you see my audio commentary for the film itself, you'll understand what that means and why I used it. Um, but then we have the first short-term memory or the first um, thought of hers come in as English. And they're kind of leaning on the table in front of Jasmine. And what they do, what I do to establish the positioning of English is I start with English talking and then I have Jasmine respond with her eye line looking up towards English and then I have a um, wipe of the camera as it swishes to the um, English itself and then I use that as a way to establish where English is positioned so in doing so I firstly have the cue of the character or the actress um, showing who the where the positioning of the person that is talking is and then I have the camera actually show it so by doing this what I've um, done um, I've set up uh, essentially a dynamic between the two of them here where I have um, the camera set up here essentially some it's essentially going between a little 180 degree here following the 180 degree rule which filmmakers should follow. So I have the camera here. And what I've established with the camera is that Jasmine, when talking to English, is on the right side of the camera. And when she's talking, when English is talking to Jasmine, English is on the left side of the camera. 
So in doing so, in any sort of conversation, when you see over the head shots, or not over the head shots, sorry, over the shoulder shots and whatnot, you have characters looking from one side to the other. And to maintain continuity and to not um, really destroy the audience when they're watching the film, you have to try to maintain that same continuity. So when I'm having a conversation between Jasmine and English, I should always try to keep Jasmine on the right side of the camera and English on the left. This is where the 180 degree rule comes in. So imagine there's a line between the two characters. So where I've set them up first, so I've had Jasmine on the right, English on the left. I can't pass over the line and I can't have the camera on this side here because that would then have Jasmine on the left and English on the right. So yeah, you don't have the camera set up there once I've created that line. And throughout pretty much the whole film, I have the camera stay on the left side of the, ca of the classroom when you see it from the back like we're seeing now. I then introduce um, two more thoughts. So I introduce time, sitting back here, and failing, who's on this side. Um, oh, a little cut off there. There we are, it's better. So I introduce time and failing who are there. And what I do then is, um, at first I wanted to actually have three thoughts here. So I was gonna have one on the left, one on the right, and one in the middle. But what I've gone with is just two thoughts because I actually had three or four extra thoughts which I wanted to put into this scene itself. But that became too much for me to try to balance all these thoughts and have them all in the same classroom at the same time. Um, so what I've done then, now that I've put characters behind Jasmine, the 180 degree rule that I said was between these two here is now between these three here. So it's just like this um, between them. So what happens now though is that the camera is essentially just slid down a little and it's down here. So what happens now is that Jasmine is on the left side of the screen and time and failing are on the right over here. It messes with the continuity which I had up here when I had English on the left and Jasmine on the right because now Jasmine is on the left. But to ensure that to audiences that it's not confusing or to lessen the confusion some may have, I have the wipe transition come again where I have the camera whip to the right and that way it seems natural that there are people behind her and that Jasmine is now looking to her right and talking to these people. What I also do is I also use another eyeline shot. So when I have failing come in from the side here and they come across here to sit down, I cut to Jasmine as she's looking towards that side a little. That way you still have that reconfirmation from the character itself that there is a new thought there. Moving on from there, I introduced uh, math. So math I established in a very simple way, more or less. So I had math um, trying to figure out where I could put them given the 180 degree line and whatnot that I had. It became difficult trying to put them not just all on that line, so they're not all just sitting next to one another. So. A way to get around that with math was put math directly across from Jasmine. And that way, when the camera is directly in front of Jasmine and she's looking towards it, towards it, sorry, she's looking towards math. Um, math was standing up, so Jasmine wasn't looking at the camera itself, but just looking slightly above the camera. And I had the reverse shot for math looking down towards the camera itself. And this way I was able to establish a third line per se going across this way. But because I had the camera on the line itself, I really didn't create any sort of distraught with the previous line which I had established down the middle. And once again by having this come in, it's just a simple way of adding in another character without breaking the continuity I already had and also confusing the audiences. So that way we know now as an audience that every time we have Jasmine looking from the right or looking to her left. She's talking to English. Every time she's looking um, to her right, she's talking to time or failing. And every time she's looking towards the camera, she's talking to math. 
it becomes a little bit um, more complicated when I add it in the next thought. And these final two thoughts actually had a way around them and a way to ensure that they wouldn't be too confusing in the way that they're executed and portrayed. Um, and that is to actually have them appear in a new position for a very short amount of time. And by doing so, you just get introduced to them, you see them there for a second, and then that continuity I set up between the two characters, essentially Jasmine and the th following thoughts I'm going to tackle, is quickly dispersed and they're put in a way which is easy to remember and easy to follow. So specifically with Endgame, I have Endgame in the corner here, diagonal from Jasmine. And the problem itself that I've set up now is that I have so many lines coming across. I have the one down the middle, the one across, and now a diagonal one itself. But once again, a way around that was just having um, Jasmine's eye line look towards Endgame, establish where Endgame was, because we know that she's not going to look directly to her left, but she's looking slightly to the angle. Then I have a low angle shot of Endgame looking towards the opposite angle that which Jasmine looked at. This way establishing where Endgame is. And then immediately after that, I cut to a uh, mid shot of Jasmine with her eye line again. And in doing so, her eyes follow Endgame as they move across next to English. So by doing this, I introduce Endgame to a new position. After quickly establishing them and showing where they are, I have English now slightly to the right of the table, and I put end game next to them. So following this, by establishing this setup, I return to the camera position which I had here, with Jasmine on the right of the camera, English and end game on the left. So now we've established or re-established the opening first few shots we had, where we had Jasmine looking to the left, we knew she was talking to English. But now we've just added in Endgame. So that was the way I quickly established Endgame in this corner here and then move them to a new position. And it's kind of uh, making everything a little more consistent and a little more easy to understand. There are two people behind Jasmine, two people in front of Jasmine, one across. So it becomes a little complicated when I try to add in another thought just to make the whole mind feel a little more crammed. I wanted one extra one and it was a good one to try to um, conclude the scene itself. So to make sure, one, it was a conclusion to the scene, and two, that it didn't really irritate all that I had previously set up, I had brother as the final thought, and I introduced them in between the two tables, and I did so on a low angle. So what I did essentially was place brother just on a slight angle diagonally from Jasmine in the opposite way that we saw Endgame. So that way you don't get the two confused, and at the same time, it's something new, but it's not there for so long that you get confused by what's going on. So you have Jasmine looking down towards Brother, and then you have Brother looking up towards Jasmine. So I use reverse shots here from a low and high angle to establish the new position of Brother, as well as establish um, how Jasmine is looking towards them. And the fact that they're on a low angle as well, um, also helps set up the fact that they are a younger brother, which is why they're smiling like they do and acting the way they do. So after brother's few lines of dialogue, which there aren't many at all of, I quickly conclude the scene and I essentially get rid of all of the thoughts. So brother, you don't ever see again, you see them for that one shot, then they're gone. No more math, no more time failing, English or end game. And we're back to how we started the scene. We have just Jasmine and we have the camera just front on how she entered the mind. She's going to leave the mind. So the camera is just front on facing her. There's a mid shot. Then we go up to the close shot and she goes back to the real world. So I hope you've enjoyed this video itself. Um, this is just a breakdown of my film Crammed. Um, the scene, scene in question is the mind scene or Jasmine's mind. So this is the film I made in... Uh, August or July, July I believe of 2019 um, crammed, you can barely see that but this is Jasmine's mind and this scene itself was what started the whole filming process, if it wasn't for this 
um, scene or this film, uh, this scene, sorry, in this specific idea, I wouldn't have made the film as it is because the whole film revolved around this scene. It's probably easily the best scene in the film itself. Um, keeping the stationary shots to ensure I could have the same actress play different characters was vital and placing the characters in ways which the audience could understand that there were six different characters all in different positions around the board itself interacting around the classroom not on the board I am talking on the board here but in the scene it's a classroom and yeah talking to the one central character itself was vital so thanks for watching everyone i hope you've enjoyed this breakdown at the time of recording this i'm not sure how it's gone but thank you for your support if you have seen it and well hopefully if you haven't seen it you can go check it out now and understand what went into the building of this scene itself make sure you hit that like button subscribe to my channel and until next time i'll see you guys 